my name is Jimmy Lin. I lead the NLP product line at Sambonova. Prior to that, I, I held engineering and uh, product roads across the full AI stack from chip design to software to deep learning model development deployment. My, me and my team are mainly responsible for the models as well as developing the recipes to train and use them. Those then get uh, integrated into our platform. And what our customer get, it, it's a much more simplified, abstracted, and a repeatable experience. We thrive on delivering state-of-the-art results out of the box with additional flexibility for our customer to customize it in, in the way that they need it. So in this talk, I'd like to share with you what we find as a practical approach to deliver enterprise value with foundation model. So a little bit about background on who we are and what we do. Um, Sambanova was founded in November 2017 by starting the center here, Robbie Goliang, our CEO, formal senior VP of Oracle, managing all processors and ASIC development. On the left here, I have uh, Kunle Lukaton, professor at Stanford University in, in electrical engineering and computer science, also known as the father of multi-code processor. On the right, hopefully this is no stranger to the snorkel community, we have Chris Ray, also professor at Stanford in, in computer science. Uh, he's the MacArthur Genius Award recipient, also co-founder of Snorkel AI. Since our inception, it has been an exciting ride to say the least for everyone who has been involved. In a short five-year span, we had expanded from our Palo Alto headquarter to a global presence with uh, offices in EMEA and also Asia PAC. We now have more than 500 employees and counting and have raised 1.1 billion in capital to this date. And all that has enabled us to keep our foot on the gas pedal. At Sambanova System, we focus on AI innovation using foundation model to increase and drive customer value. We deliver fully integrated AI platforms that include the silicon, the compiler, the software stack, to pre-trained models and APIs that can be deployed at any data center of your choice. Now, with foundation model, we're at the cusp of yet another paradigm shift in AI and machine learning. It's important to contextualize the significance because more profoundly than before, the shift is yet again going to change how AI systems are going to be built going forward. So if we look back at the traditional machine learning era started in early 2000, the focus then was to solve largely analytical problems using machine learning. The data use was entirely structured, and there's significant upfront effort required to design and engineer the features in order for you to make it to do what you wanted to do. So what gets deployed are small models that excel in analytical tasks, very feature engineering heavy, and one model for, for every task. Now, roughly a decade later, uh, the first shift had happened Deep learning became the new focus, first led by the events in computer vision, then followed by uh, natural language processing. And as part of that, the core problem people were trying to solve has also shifted from dealing with structured data to largely unstructured data. Now, so it's no longer about understanding how to interpret or, or make use of the different columns in the tabular data, but more about making sense out of a given set of pixels or, or a paragraph of text. Now with the different approach came, I'm sorry, with the different problem came the different approach. People started to build different model architecture to address different problems. That marks the start of the uh, model centric era. Now later on, transfer learning has certainly further revolutionized deep learning. And when it comes to deployment though, it still largely result in one model for every task, similar to the first era. Now, for example, if I have two classification tasks that I want to apply on the even the same data, um, if the classes are different, I need to train two different models, not to mention label the data in two different ways. So you can see the deficiencies there. It also takes a lot of time and effort to train these models. Each problem is very specific, hence the need of a lot of models. The barrier of adoption is also higher compared to the previous era. You'll need uh, deep technical expertise to decide what model is best suited for which problem. So why are we so excited about the shift to foundation model or this new uh, data-centric era? In case if you missed that, um, Alex from Storco 
in the opening presentation touch on many aspects of this. Uh, he articulated more elegantly than I possibly can. So I'll certainly encourage you to watch that in case you've missed it. Two things I'll add though is one, they're flexible enough to take on both structured and unstructured data. In other words, it presents the potential to replace the functions from the previous two eras. And due to their innate ability to understand language as the second point, people can now interact with these models using natural language directly. So the barrier of entry essentially is dissolved. Now you no longer need to build features or change the model to make it perform a certain task. Anything that you can frame as a question or as an instruction becomes something you can ask you now the model to do. That means non-technical user uh, are also enabled and literally anyone can start uh, exploiting this technology. The focus has also shifted to the data. And I'll talk more about that and the implication there uh, later part of the talk. Now, really, this presents not just from the technology perspective, but a fundamental shift of how enterprises are deploying and using AI. Now, if we take a look at how enterprises are deploying AI today, they have literally thousands of models. Why? Because number one, Every use case has its own unique requirement and nuances. And the reason number two is due to all the limitations that uh, we talked about um, on the previous slide, from the previous era. Each model is built to accomplish a specific task. So you can imagine all the implications and the issues this presents um, from not only engineering complexity perspective, but also the overhead associated with maintaining and upkeeping everything. So what a foundation model enables to do is to take all that and solve with much, if not all of it, with a single model, right? If the previous picture is what your organization is facing today, this means the chance to consolidate and modernize your approach, doing more with less, allowing you to break the limitation you face today and, and scale with even more advanced uh, capability. If you're new to AI, foundation model provides you with a more modern approach to get to value quicker. In reality, model is just the starting point. There's more work you have to do to turn that into enterprise value. So in the rest of the talk, I really want to focus on the three things that uh, we focus on and some of the key uh, implications to get to enterprise value. Number one, Training is important, or further training to be exact. Um, this hopefully shouldn't come as a surprise to most people. We don't just live on foundation, for example, we build structures on it. And the name foundation model implies the same semantic. You don't necessarily equate, um, they don't necessarily equate to end solution right away. Further training them is a step for you to get there. And I'll give some examples uh, of what we mean by that in the very next section. Now, the second thing is integration with technical workflow matters. You gotta meet the workflow where they're at today. You need flexibility to, in deployment because in reality is enterprise are hybrid. You need the uh, flexibility to meet the very different needs between training and inference. You also need the flexibility to adjust the behavior of the model to avoid introducing any integration overhead with the downstream system. And again, I'll, I'll talk more about that in the later part of this talk. And ultimately, to really get value, you got to think beyond just the model or the technology. You got to start with the business process and the business pain points. You need to break it down into each individual pain point that's being experienced. Really understand that from a business perspective and work backwards. Right? I'll give you some example of what I mean by that uh, as well. So. Starting with training, the importance of training. So perhaps the most um, accessible way today for you to try playing with the foundation model is to go to one of the cloud service providers playground. What you find there is um, um, they mostly provide a two-stage pipeline offering fine tuning and deployment. Now, as the starting point, you can pick a variant of the pre-trained model they offer and start uh, exploring what it can do right off the bat. And additionally, you have the option to fine tune it using your own data and then deploy the fine tune model. Um, so why, why do we say more training is critical? 
um, more pre-training it's a step that model develops its uh, natural language modeling capability. Now, this is a step typically pre-built by the service provider and not made available to the user. While a pre-trained foundation model at this stage has general understanding of the language, um, the chances are it's not as good as uh, where you want it to be uh, when it comes to following what you ask it to do. Right? Instead of performing the task the way you expect, it could do something else. It could do something else like um, paraphrasing your questions or ask you a question back. Right. This is a general observation, by the way, uh, that applies to almost all pre-trained models. With in-context learning or few shots, you can, to a certain degree, re reshape how these model behaves. Uh, but these are inference-only approach, and which found it more suitable for exploration or exploitation phases of your product development. But um, but uh, fine tuning really, or fine tuning is really the way um, to bake that into the model and make it more repeatable and consistent. Whether it's to make it to follow instruction like a virtual assistant, or to be more factual oriented, or to simply perform a certain task in a very specific way. Right? So fine tuning part is open to most users, and this allows the model to adapt to downstream tasks in the uh, generic language domain. So however, this, this problem uh, we're trying to solve, if your problem is trying to solve, it's more um, domain specific. And this really depends on how much your target domain overlaps with the general domain the model is being trained on. Um, there's still a significant gap in terms of the quality of results. So some of the platform offers not just three, but a four-stage pipeline. We expose the full pre-training capability for those who want to create your own foundation model from scratch. But more generally, you can take our pre-trained model and further pre-train it using your domain-specific data as a second pre-training stage. So this allows the model to adapt to what really makes this domain specialized. Um, for example, it could adapt to different definition of the shared vocabulary between the general domain and the specific domain. This could literally bring different meanings to the sentence. Um, there are also ways for you to effectively increase the vocabulary of the model to allow it to learn more special terminologies or, or acronyms um, that could carry unique meanings, um, and then that, and, and that where the words themselves can also be unique to your organization or your product. Now, what you end up with is a pre-trained model that not only understand language at the end of the second stage, but also specialize um, in their target domain. Now, when you fine tune on that, uh, whether it's for, um, instruction following or, or task updatation or task targeting, it will give you much better coverage for your target, resulting in the best possible accuracy or quality of results. And you can do all this uh, on the same platform, um, which can be deployed to a data center of your choice, any data center of your choice. Now, a lot of times um, we hear generative AI we see foundation model, we wonder how different they are, and they're all different in a certain way. In fact, uh, we see significant impact on downstream task accuracy on how the model is being trained. So here we have some data points showing that uh, we're able to achieve higher accuracy just by training the model differently using a data-centric approach with a model that's more than 100x smaller our own pre-trained GPT, when given very low amount of resource uh, label data, uh, with a typical starting point, which is the typical starting point for an uh, enterprise, it can deliver accuracy advantage uh, over a few shots results from OpenAI's 175 billion model. Now, when we fine tune both models on a couple customer tasks, as you see on the right, um, in this in this case, 100 label data for each task. We also deliver accuracy advantage as you see in the table on the right. So even though 
this is more there's more work needed to further improve the accuracy there are many ways and there are many ways you can do that um with with a different model as you can see in this case right off the bat you can get better return of your investment for the fixed amount of data uh, you have to start with and from that point on um, get to value sooner Training is critical, um, but it doesn't end there though. The reality is some point you need to connect to the systems. And there are really a couple of things there. You gotta be able to deploy them where your customer wants. In reality, the enterprise are hybrid. In many cases, especially uh, regulated industries, your data needs to remain behind closed network and cannot be sent to internet. Training and deploying a model also have very different needs. It's not just the compute requirement, although that's a huge part of it. Um, there are also infrastructure and tooling you need around it. Training a, a tens or a hundreds billion parameter model using close to a terabyte worth of data. And that requires pretty much a dedicated super consumer, supercomputer scale cluster for weeks and months to train. And on inference time, you want to deploy these at high scale and hopefully not on supercomputer due to obvious cost reasons. And you also need uh, you let, uh, the flexibility uh, for efficiency purpose to deploy more or less depending on the traffic. And thirdly, you got to be able to shape the behavior of the model. Uh, not all downstream system can handle natural language as input. Many expect numeric value instead, right? So coming, this comes back to fine tuning where you can quickly adjust the behavior of the model to connect to what the downstream system are expecting. Now, in order to meet these requirements, um, you don't, we don't offer just a black box API. We provide you with the hardware, software, platform management, all integrated with a foundation model. The stack can go in your on-premise data center, your colo, sitting behind your firewalls, meeting your security protocols. And if you're a startup who only runs on cloud, we can also meet you there as well. Our architecture is reconfigurable. So this platform can be used for training and inference both efficiently. This enables you to streamline the process to do continuous learning to keep the model up to date. Now, using the more flexible four-stage model pipeline development uh, that I touched on earlier, you can easily shape the behavior of the model so that it can be easily integrated with the downstream system and workflow. Now, whether it is your contact center application or asset management optimization platform, whatever the need is to take in the data a certain way or expect the output of the model in a certain way, you can manage all that on a single platform, really reducing the overhead. Now, if you remember the slide from earlier in the presentation, all that chaos, we brought it all together onto a single platform where you can manage everything. Now, the final thing here, I wanna talk about use cases. Even though we deploy everything in a simplified fashion, it doesn't really start with the technology. It starts with um, on the what, what's on the right side of the previous slide, the, the business application and the business values. So in order to define that, um, it starts with understanding the pain points and then going and finding where those technology can help, not the other way around. So as an illustrated example, so call center, a typical contact center workflow begins with a customer calling in. And after a couple pauses and an attempt to get to the right agent, that's when they get to have a conversation with the agent to get help. Now, the agent have to actively manage the conversation to make sure that the issue customer is calling about and the sentiment is taken care of. Well, we all expect notes to be taken and but experience told us otherwise. We all found ourselves having to call back and repeat the whole journey as if the first conversation never took place. And lastly, post-call surveys are filled out by a very small percentage of customer, only people who had a 
terrible experience typically leave surveys. So despite customer call and tell you their problems, it's the best opportunity to learn about the customer. We actually are not getting any valuable insights um, with, the, uh, with, with the existing as this uh, business workflow. Now, what if we can look through the voice transcript? We can understand the exact problem they're calling with and get them connected to the right rep every single time. What's the implication of this? Reduce the uh, average call handling time by 3.8%. Now, if we can go to the right, we have a more complex challenge. Instead of the rep having to go and say, hey, can I put you on hold while research for the solution? What if we could uh, use semantic search to go look through the entire knowledge base using natural language questions and get the answer instantaneously? How can the metro be improved then? Right. Oh, we can reduce the call time even more by 25% just by simply implementing a basic function. Now, if we go on with this call, and what if instead of making the rep to go put in the notes they don't want to do because they want to get to the next call as soon as possible, what if we can automatically summarize this call right, with all the relevant information? Um, is it going to? Yeah. yeah, that will be... That would be useful. All the we can automatically summarize the call with all the relevant information, with um, not only for this call but also for cross sell and uh, upsell and retention later on, right? That will not only get more information but also reduce the call time even further. Now, finally, if we can get accurate and relevant information on how we did by not just getting the 5% of the unhappy customer, but 100% happy and unhappy. And by the way, records on how we actually solved the problem they're calling about, what would that be worth? So there's a lot of things, things here. Hopefully you can see where we're getting at. Um, if you're trying to start with the model or with the technology and then look to apply that somewhere, it's harder to be successful. Instead, start with the business process map identifying the pain points, going, but then going back to where and how these technologies should be applied. Now, in, in summary, three practical implications to use formulation model to get to enterprise. Training matters, whether it's fine tuning or doing more pre-training. Integration with technical workflow matters. You gotta meet the system where they're at. And number three, you got to start with the business value and don't start with the technology and try to find the problem. You got to do the other way around. So this is a practical approach uh, that we're taking to help our customer to get to value sooner with the new generative capability, the model, uh, the sky is really the limit. So looking ahead, we expect to see increased interest, especially from startup to build on top of perhaps a small number of leading foundation models. And through further training and fine tuning, we expect to see highly differentiated uh, domain or use case specific model to show up. So that concludes my talk. It looks like I'm right on time. I would like to thank you for your attention. Hopefully you find that helpful. Um, be happy to talk more about other use cases or other things we have seen. Uh, please email me here. I'll be happy to talk more about uh, your problem and how we can help you to use foundation model to improve your business. Please also follow us, uh, follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter to stay tuned as we have uh, more exciting news to share in the coming weeks.